Have you ever wondered what you can do about those cold searing drafts that are running through your house through the winter? Well, if so, then you need to know about air tightness. It's one of the big three of retrofit, insulation, air tightness, ventilation. And if your house is built before the 1930s, then you need to include breathability. They work perfectly together, but if you miss one out, then you're not gonna get the result that you're looking for. Sadly, there are not enough builders yet to really take air tightness seriously. So it's really helpful if you understand enough to have a good conversation with them to make sure you get the outputs you're looking for. If you're making all that effort to get your home energy efficient and comfortable to live in, and of course, cheaper to run, then the last thing we want is for you to be disappointed with the end result. To create that airtight thermal envelope, we use an air tightness membrane. Now, this is what it looks like. This is Pavatex is the one that we use, but there's different forms of it and they'll all work very well. And what we're aiming to do is to create a continuous covering around the whole of the inside of the house so that no air can get through it. The real trick in air tightness is to be nitpicky. It's just all in the detail. And lots of builders are just not used to doing this, so they won't think about it. Which is why I did this video, because I think as customers, we've got to really understand it and say clearly what we need and help them understand why it's important. So let me see if I can show you how it works. This is a model that John made to use to, to show how you insulate under a suspended floor. So in between all the joists, you're putting, uh, we've got wood fiber insulation. There is another video about this. I'll put a link up above so you can go and take a look if you want to. Wood fiber insulation. And then because even with plenty of fiber insulation, you still get air gaps where little bits of air, they can, air can get in anywhere put down an uh, airtight membrane over the top to seal it all in. But then you're going to, of course, have the airtight membrane also on your wall. And that's when you need to join the wall to the floor. So you get a continuous flow of air tightness. And that's when you use this stuff. And if you can see this sticky stuff that I've got here to show you, which is called Contiga tape. At least that's the brand that we use, but I think there's other brands and they'll all work as well. It is the stickiest tape I have ever used in my life. I taped all around this kitchen, taping the wall to the floors and it was very difficult and it didn't look great, but it soon got covered up and it's doing its job. So you put the tape on, so it's got the break in the side, one side for the floor, one side for the wall, and it just sticks and then it holds and keeps an airtight seal. What the airtight membrane does is it takes out all of the uncontrolled air. So when you're sitting watching telly in the evening and your feet are cold because there's cold air coming up through the floor or there's cold air, you're getting a crick in your neck because there's cold air coming through the windows, that's uncontrolled. You've got no way of doing anything about that. Once you've put your airtight membrane around it, then you've got control, but you haven't got any ventilation and you're going to end up with too moist air and stuffy. It'll feel and smell stuffy. Let's look at all the different places you need to address when you're thinking about air tightness. The biggest one, of course, has to be chimneys. So if you're in an old house that's got fireplaces, think about what you want to do with your chimneys. Because essentially a chimney is just a dirty great hole into your house, allowing in cold air and leaching all of your hot air, you're just losing it all up through the chimney. We dealt with this by taking out the chimneys in the end. We took it completely out of the dining room and it gave us extra space to put in the insulation. It's a very dirty process, I have to tell you, so prepare yourself. You must remember that you have to put in steels or some form of holding the chimney stack up in the loft. Otherwise, you'll have real difficulties. A structural engineer can tell you what you need to do about that. But anything 
that punctures the thermal envelope to bring pipes in is going to be a problem for air tightness. So then it's back to the Contiga tape. Anytime pipes come in, seal them up around so that you cut off anything coming through the hole that the pipes had to go through. Another obvious place is your windows. We spend a lot of time, don't we, thinking about do we want double glazing or triple glazing or this new queuing glass. We're thinking about the glass itself. But we need to think about other parts of it when we're talking about air tightness. Where the actual glass fits into the window frame and where the window frame fits into the aperture, into the wall opening because both of those places can allow uncontrolled air to come in. So when you're choosing your windows, talk to the provider about air tightness and find out how are they going to seal the glass into the frame and the frame into the aperture, into the opening. You'll have exactly the same issue with your external doors. Think of your front door. Maybe you've got some glass in it. Again, you need to have a good double or triple glaze of your glass and it's how the glass is sealed into the door itself and then how the door sits in its own frame and how the door frame fits in the doorway. Each of those places is a possibility for a break in the thermal envelope. So when you're buying them, when you're talking to people who are going to fit it, quiz them, find out what they're going to do. You'll soon learn if they understand air tightness or not. And if not, talk to other providers or go searching on the internet, see what else you can find and say, here you are, this is what you need to be doing. Show them this video, whatever. But don't leave it that you're going to end up with drafts afterwards because you're going to regret it. All this hard work, don't spoil it now. Just one final bit about windows and doors. Where you've got a double or a triple glaze, you will have a locking system on the door. You know where you have to lift the handle up in order to lock the door at all, but you need to do that all the time. I didn't understand until I got the thermal imaging camera on the door that you can actually see a difference when you've turned the handle up so the locking mechanism has gone into play and that makes a difference to air tightness too. Wherever you have air vents, you've got a problem with air tightness. The very best you can do, we've already said you've got to have ventilation. The best way to manage it is with heat recovery, then you don't lose all of your warmth. One thing to say is if you're, again, in an old house with a suspended floor, you'll have air bricks on the outside. That's how you can tell if it's an old house. Look for air bricks. Never, ever, ever, ever under any circumstances cover those air bricks up. If you do in one room at a time or you're not able yet to do this major retrofit stuff, then there are ways you can still cut back the, the uncontrolled air and the drafts and improve your air tightness. I put together a little booklet. It's a free download off my blog site. I'll put the link in the description below, but go and help yourself. And if you know anybody else that would use it, schools, local councils, CAB, anywhere, let them have it, just send them the link. It's all the hacks I could find, but there are things you can do that will improve the state of your home, even if you can't do the big stuff. And if you want to do the big stuff, or you want to understand more about what it would look like and start working towards it, then take a look at my book. It'll give you enough so you can talk to the builders or you can find out where to look and you've got all the right language to use. So if there are any other questions, just let me know. I'd really like to help you have a warm and energy efficient home.